Good morning, everybody. Paul Eihander with you. Instagram Hill here on the ones and twos. It is a Monday morning to remember for sure. Yes, today is April Fool's Day. And if you think to yourself of all the things that have happened in the past three weeks, that this would not be a joke, that the NC State Wolfpack men's basketball team and the NC State women's basketball team would both be in the Final Four. You would think that was complete, complete fallacy. Just the biggest lies of lies. We are growing Pinocchio noses, but not so today. April Fool's Day is not about practical jokes. It is not about playing jokes on your friends, and you are not waking up from a dream, Pack fans. <laughs> the dream continues. The run continues. As I said last night, after the games were over, we did an instant special following the wins by both the men and women. It's not a bandwagon anymore. It's a damn trail ride. And we are rounding up all the stray cattle. We are rounding up all the stray herds that are wandering close to the cliffs. And we are bringing them all back in. And there's a guy leading the charge right down this trail. Matter of fact, there's quite a few guys and quite a few women as well leading the way down these trails. Let's start with the men first, where no one seems to want to let Gary Hahn retire. McCain throwing it up to the rim, missed the shot, missed the half-court shot, and it's all over. It's all over here in Dallas. The Wolfpack is riding an incredible wave, and the wave has turned into a tsunami. And that tsunami is headed to Phoenix, Arizona for the Final Four. Final score, 76-64. The Wolfpack beats Duke. You can light up the bell tower red. The pack is back in the national semifinals for the first time since 1983. NC State beats Duke for the second time in the month of March, this time for a trip to the Final Four. Incredible. But wait, there's more. Two hours prior, the 76-64 win over Duke by this Wolf Pack. The women did the same thing with the same score almost. They also scored 76, but dropped 66 to the Texas women and ensured themselves a trip to Cleveland. So excited the audio cut out. <laughs> <laughs> they were thrilled. They were so excited. All right, Graham, here's the deal. What up? April Fool's Day, not a fool's day for everybody. Madison March is over, but it continued last night. You were there on Hillsborough Street when that buzzer finally sounded. People started filming each other, <laughs> cheering and laughing. What was that moment like to be in the middle of that? Folks, if you're not following 999 The Fans' Instagram account, what are you doing? You got some exclusive behind the scenes from Boots on the Ground, Instagram himself on the Instagram. Hint, hint. That's the reason it's called that. We started off at the Avenue. where We had a nice watch party amongst NC State fans. And thankfully, I paid in cash. I did not have a credit card or a debit card that I had to go to the bar and cash <laughs> out. Because as soon as that game was over with, Everybody immediately threw their drinks away. Some people took their drinks out of the bar. They got away with it and just immediately started running to, to the bell tower. And it felt like a parade with everybody running together, people driving down Hillsborough Street, honking their horns, uh, people in the back of truck beds, starting the wolf pack chant. And it took me about, I'd say, 10 minutes to get to the bell tower. I was gassed by the time I got there. But once I got there, there was already – a thousand people out there, close to it, and toilet paper, DJ Burns chants. Somebody was screaming out, "What can we set on fire?" They couldn't <laughs> find anything to set on fire. <laughs> That's a good thing. But not only was it students, it was just a generation of fans from current students to older people that had been and people that had been there for the last '83 uh, championship to toddlers to uh, just just. In between, I mean, it was truly, it was truly a spectacle. And the the craziest part was a lady who had watched the game, I believe, at Players Retreat. She had parked her car um, in front of the bell tower. I, I think her name was uh, uh, Gianna. Anyways, nice, nice older lady, about in her sixties, and she was leaning against the car. And I asked her, if "This is her car?" And she said, "Yes, it was." I said, well, "When do you plan on leaving?" She was like, "I don't care. 
I don't care what time I leave tonight. <laughs> it, it was just that kind of moment in Raleigh. So live it up, Wolfpack Nation. And if you're if you're a Wolfpack fan this morning, magical runs for the men and women. Paul Ihander here, Instagram Hill, recounting uh, last night. It was it was a long night and a and a great. Uh, you know, we you start the day with with spiritualness and prayer because it was an Easter Sunday. It finishes out with a lot of dreams and a lot of hopes. Some dashed, unfortunately, for Duke, and we'll get into that later. Uh, but for the state dreams, for both men and women, moving on, the state will play in the first game on Saturday against Purdue. The early line on this one right now is Purdue by nine and a half. And the line for state to win the whole damn thing right now is plus eighteen hundred. So for those of you, say less. Yeah, for those of you who have been uh, who have been doing uh, the uh, the sports gambling, the sports betting, and you've been just riding state and riding state. Well, there's I, I don't know. Maybe there's no reason to keep stop stop uh, that ride whatsoever. For most outstanding player, it was DJ Burns last night for uh, the region. And he also has early odds to be the final foremost and standing player. We won't dig too deep into that, obviously, because it's been a, a really special time for everybody. And again, it was both teams, both the men and women, got back early this morning. I'm going right back to Instagram. Graham, you were there. For, I mean, you 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 had a full full day. I was joking about you know, hey, Easter Sunday, and let's have some brunch, and then we'll all get together and watch games. Like you 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 just stayed out there. Like I'm I'm I, first of all, I'm actually shocked that you made it in today. But that moment. At I guess it was what two in the morning this morning. Two a.m. You were there. Two a.m. was exactly the time they got back to and Raleigh the, this morning. And the men get off the bus, and there still must be there must have been several hundred of people there just going nuts on whatever fumes they had left. It felt like NC State's basketball team since it's also WrestleMania week. It felt like they were getting a WrestleMania grand entrance. Modiar was the first one to get off the bus. And as soon as he turned that corner again, if you're not following the fans Instagram, you should because you can get the exclusive like. Me from about three feet from the bus. I almost got hit as that thing was pulling in. I mean, they were, <laughs> they were speeding to get back and get that thing parked. Modior gets off the bus, turns the corner, and from what was a, a loud cheer, just went to an eruption of cheers. And then Dennis Parker Jr. with that damn boom box getting off the bus. <laughs> Why not us? Playing Crunk Ain't Dead. If you're if you're listening if you're in the car with your with a middle school or a high school right now, I would not recommend playing that song unless you can find the clean version of it. Is there a clean version of Crunk Eight? We'll see because I'll try I'll try to come back in with it from our commercial okay. break. Okay. Dennis Parker Jr. And then I was trying to count how many NC State basketball players got off the bus with their shirts off between Ben Middlebrooks. Um, yeah, Middlebrooks was doing his full Mark Madsen. If, you're not, <laughs> if, you, if you can't appreciate Mark Madsen from the Los Angeles Lakers back in the day, uh, he was known for shirt off, just being kind of wild. That Ben Middlebrooks was channeling Mark Madsen last night. Yeah, it, it, it was really cool. And DJ Burns, once he got – DJ Burns was the last one off the bus, of course, save the best for last. And uh, he went to the middle of the crowd and actually spoke for a little bit. And I was trying to go ahead and post the video, so I couldn't catch the whole speech, but he said something along the lines of, Thank you, Wolfpack Nation. Riley, this one's for you. And for everybody outside of Wolfpack Nation, we haven't hit our ceiling yet. We're wow. not done. Okay. This well. team believes that they can win the national championship. And for everybody that's saying, well, how can you call this team a dominant team in the NCAA tournament where they had to rely on a prayer shot from Michael O'Connell in the ACC tournament? They had to pull out an overtime win against Oakland. They had to pull out a, a, a late run from Marquette. I got, I got a spoiler for you folks. Good teams know how to win when they should it in the NCAA tournament. And right now, I hate to tell you, NC State is a really damn good team in the NCAA tournament. You can tell this team is living its best life for sure, and the players are certainly appreciating the moment. Championships are rare. They do now have a South Region Championship. That will be on a banner. This will be a Final Four appearance. The question is, can they do it two more times? It's not even about lightning striking. It's about just playing the same brand of basketball that you've been playing and going up against a very big Purdue team. Again, as you mentioned, D.J. Burns living his best moments. We saw a lot of photos last night of him uh, just taking pictures with just random people, just taking lots of pictures. Security and, guards even. Right, with and, you know Kevin Keats doing the same thing, signing autographs and whatnot. Championships are rare events. When you get to this point uh, in your special sport or as a fan of these special sports, you don't get to see a lot of these things. We talk about the Carolina Hurricanes, obviously. The Hurricanes, their last cup nearly 20 years ago, now 18 years ago. The last time this team was in the Final Four, the Wolfpack men, 1983. 
People call back to that thinking, was it 83? Was it not 83? It was 83. It's imprinted in your brain. But that's a generation that hasn't seen a run like this. And even for the women making their second Final Four appearance, their first one was in 1998. We are talking 25 years since the last time people can remember that. That is a full, like, by 25, most people, unless you're Tommy Boy or doctors, have, have graduated from post from university studies and whatnot. There's a full generation. I mean, those people that have graduated in 98 or remember 98 have children of their own if they decided to do so. This is their first taste of having a Final Four experience and having it. And the, the, the magical part about it is, the special part about it is, it's both the men and the women doing it at the same time. So the women play on Friday in Cleveland. There's only one half of that bracket that is set right now. They are playing South Carolina. So it'll be South Carolina and NC State in the women's side on Friday night. The other two teams will be determined tonight as the uh, Elite Eight hasn't wrapped up on the women's side. On the men's side, the first game will be State versus Purdue. That'll be just after 6 o'clock Eastern time. And then the late game will involve UConn and Bama. That's the late game at the Final Four on Saturday. Complete coverage all week long here on 99.9 The Fan. I'm Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 99.9 The Fan. DJ Burns scored a season-high 29 points on 13 of 19 shooting. DJ Horn had 20 points and 11th seed at NC State. Beat Duke 76 to 64 in the South Region Final yesterday. NC State is back on basketball's biggest stage for the first time since 1983. The last time the Wolfpack claimed a national championship. Isaiah James made a career high seven three pointers and scored 27 points. And third seeded NC State earned his first trip to the Final Four of the women's NCAA tournament since 1998, being top seeded Texas 76. 66 on Sunday as well. Number seven seed Duke women's basketball team struggled to generate offense, turning the ball over 23 times in a season ending 53 to 45 loss Saturday night against UConn in the Portland Regional Final. Find these stories and more on WRLSportsFan.com. State beat Duke 76-64. And they're running it back. They're on the they're on the the road to Phoenix, the trail, whatever it is. Kevin Keats, DJ Burns, the trail bosses of this big ride for sure. And on the women's side, we'll get into that with ACC Network's Kelly Gramlich here in about 15 minutes. 76-66 state over Texas. That is a Zaya James and Sanaya Rivers and Westmore driving that train to the north. We got we got wagon trains going over. We're going to focus here on the men and the game that got us here, because. We know the path that has that started many moons ago, right? Nine straight games. We're all aware of the run this team has been on. Texas Tech in round one. Oakland in overtime, round two. Marquette back and forth. And then finally, NC State over Duke, 76-64. That first half, a complete rock fight, Graham. Like both teams, as they talked about, played a lot of defense, didn't get a lot of offense going. Was it nerves? Was it just understanding what the next step would be for both these teams? And then the possible disappointment. Before this whole tournament started, I talked about Duke and the expectations that they would have coming into this and what it would take for it not to be such a rough run moving forward. And the same way for State as they started moving through the tournament. Was it going to be this unbelievable run that we have seen? No one could have predicted this. Let's be honest. Let's be honest with ourselves. No one could have predicted this. The diehards were like, yeah, yeah, for sure. But I think it took one win to go, we can get a couple more and get a couple more. And then, again, right? Why not us? Why not us? Kevin Keats talked about the biggest blessing of this run so far. I think the biggest blessing is they, they've stayed true to who they are. You know, obviously, you know, when you go through a season, there are going to be a lot of ups and downs. Um, number one, you got to win every type of game to advance. Um, but there are going to be some emotions. Like we, we started off five and one in our conference. We lost our last four games. There are going to always be some adversity. And I, I, you know, what these guys have strung together games, they've never wavered in their belief. The honesty from head coach Kevin Keats. And for a guy who's 
been just locked in and stares straight at what needs to be done. It's very clear this team is rallied behind him. They his his players say the right things. They do all the right moves. I would say that staying true to themselves has meant a lot of different things for a lot of different players. Because for state in terms of consistency, they've been getting solid performances out of some some nights and then others step up when those performances slide. You know, Mo- Modiara was a factor in last night's game, but not like the factor he had been in prior games, to where DJ Burns turns up in a season high and spins and dances like I believe everybody knew he could do, but decided within the first couple of minutes of that game that nothing was going to stop him and nobody was going to. And DJ Horn hitting clutch shots again. The DJ's coming through, playing up to the narrative that this team has what it takes to move forward. However... There's another team on the side of this thing, the Duke Blue Devils, who, again, is it disappointment? Is it they just got outplayed? Whatever it might be, they did speak very well of their opponent after that game, Kyle Filipowski, on what he said to DJ Burns after the game. Yeah, he was just, he was just showing love to me, and I was showing some love back to him. I, was, I, told, him, um, I told him to you know, go win it all, I told him to... Uh, that he should be proud of himself. I'm, I'm proud of him for how much he's accomplished in these last couple months. Um, you know, he's just, you know, it just even when, even when he, he beats it, you can't hate him. Um, just, uh, yeah, so just uh, showing some uh, love to one another. Even when he beats you, you can't hate him. High praise. High praise with DJ Burns from Cal Filipowski. I respect that a lot. Flip had a tough night, too. 3 of 12 from the field, 30 minutes. Fouled out in that one. 11 points and 9 rebounds. Yeah. Felt, felt that was one of the bigger moments in this game. Jared McCain tried to will them to a win playing all 40 minutes. I mean, he he tried his darndest. And leading the Blue Devils with 32 points. Yeah, he, 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 tried, he tried his darndest to make it happen. Another guy who tried. Again, when you shoot 32% from the field after you shoot pretty much the same in the first half it wasn't going to happen state had things rolling I think I was able to put it down at about the just after the seven minute mark horn hit a three and I was like yep it's time time to move again and then I believe when when flip fouled out it felt like a big turning point like the low post game went away from Duke. That They just ran out of that option. When Kyle Filipowski fouled out with 452 left that's when the crowd at the avenue started to started to they could start to feel it. They could start to recognize what was about to happen. They knew that Raleigh was ready for a party last night. 55 points in that second half for the pack. That's another crazy thing that I did not realize points. until I read about that last night. 55 points and outscoring the Blue Devils, I think, 22-11 to 11 to start out the second half. And still managing to play that swarming defense that the pack, again, just figured something out, dug deep. And Michael O'Connell played 39 minutes. Like, just bet was the steady hand, and he was the leading rebounder on the team for the pack. Just shows you that he was everywhere, or trying to be everywhere, and didn't have to step too far out of his comfort zone. Lots of praise for DJ Burns last night. Clearly, he has been the emerging star uh, of this postseason for this team. Uh, we've seen it here. We know about it here. Everyone else warming up to it. Uh, again, lots of compliments to him, including uh, from his opponents, Jeremy Roach on DJ Burns. He's special. Um... He's he can do it. He's what is he like two seventy? I mean, he's just he's just a low down there. I mean, he gets to the spots, soft touch, got a jumper, got passing vision. So like you can't double him. So he he's gonna pass out the post. Um, so kind of got to go one on one. But um, man, he's a hell of a player. Um, got most outstanding player for a reason. And um, yeah. When Burns doesn't score, he passes. Yep. When Burns doesn't score, he passes. He did it against Marquette. They didn't ask him to score much against Marquette. He did put up some points, but he ended up passing the ball because teams had to figure out what to do with him. And when they have to figure out what to do with him, they forget that you've got DJ Horn, you have Jaden Taylor, who finds the electric offense, you find Casey Morsell, who has that mid-range jumper like locked in right now during this tournament. It always felt like last night when State needed a bucket, they didn't short arm them. And that's what I saw from Duke a little bit last night is they would get opportunities, but they would short arm those short range jumpers. And things just wouldn't fall for Duke. And tough for the Blue Devils for them. John Shire talked about 
State of the Dukes program. They're heartbroken after the game because it didn't go the way they wanted to. I'm thinking about these guys. Where, where's our program at? I think our program couldn't be in a stronger place. We were just 20 minutes away from going to a Final Four in our second year. You know, I don't shy away from our expectations or what we want to do. But for me, that's not the way I'm thinking at all. I'm just hurting for these guys right now. That's a tough loss. Tough loss for Duke. Happy loss for State. There's no really other way to put that out there. Someone had to win and someone had to lose. For State fans, standing up and cheering. And their next stop is Saturday. Next stop for Duke, the offseason and a rebuild. But there's plenty of time to dissect and analyze. Plenty of time to dissect and analyze. Today is about today. And enjoying the moment. Because you don't get many of these moments, right? Take the photos. Call your friends. Type out the long-witted emails. Tell someone you love them. (laughs) Say, I told you so. Even if you didn't say it before, and you don't believe it until now, Go ahead. Puff your chest out, Wolfpack fans, as you're walking to your cubicles today. Be like, yeah. I think it's okay today. So. It's okay today. What do you want to talk about? 